In this episode of Pass FCE, I give you seven reasons why you should study for the first certificate exam at a language academy and not prepare for the exam by yourself. <music> Hello and welcome to Pass FCE, a Mansion English podcast especially created to help you pass the Cambridge First Certificate in English exam. I'm Craig and I'm a teacher at the British Council in Valencia, Spain and also a Cambridge oral examiner with over 20 years of teaching experience. So here are my seven reasons to go to an academy. Number one, organisation. Number two, motivation. Number three, teacher and peer support. Number four, speaking. Number five, accountability. Number six, consistency. And number seven, fun. So let's look at these in detail. Now, I know it's expensive. I know you're paying for English courses. Maybe you can't afford it. You don't have the money. But there are good reasons why you should find the money and try to go. It's an investment and let me try to explain why. Number one, organisation. Your teacher is responsible for the course. My classes, for example, are prepared around a general FCE course. I use the course book but Every class, I adapt my material for the needs of the class as a whole. So, I organise the course based on what I feel my students need and also what they're telling me they're having problems with. So, yes, you have responsibility to organise your vocabulary, to study the grammar, to prepare for the exam and learn the technique you have that responsibility, but I as a teacher and the teacher you will have also has a big responsibility to prepare the course for you and make sure that it's organised around your needs as a student. Number two, motivation. You have your motivation for taking the exam. Perhaps you need it for work, for your job, or perhaps you need a piece of paper, something to show for all the years of your English study. So you have your motivation to improve your English and get this exam. But there is also external motivation, which helps a lot. There's motivation from your teacher. There's motivation from your classmates, the people you're studying with. Just imagine this situation. You're studying at home, you're not going to classes and there's something good on the TV and you stop studying and watch TV. Or your mate, your friend comes to play a video game. You stop studying and you play the video game. It happens. It happens a lot to me. It's easier to say no if you have a class to go to. If your English class, if your English class begins at 7 o'clock... You say to your friend, I'm sorry, I can't play the video game, I have to go to my English class. So you have that commitment, you have that obligation to go to your class once or twice a week. Also, your teacher motivates you, your teacher should motivate you to do your best, to keep studying, to do your homework, to present your writings and do your readings at home and when you go to class... Your teacher should check that you've been studying outside of the classroom also. So your teacher's motivating you and helping you to work hard for the exam. And your classmates motivate you. They're having problems, they can sympathise with you and you can sympathise with them. So as a group you're moving forward and you're supporting each other. And that support group you don't get when you're studying by yourself. And there are online forums and there are places you can go to ask questions if you're having problems with grammar. 
For example, if you're studying by yourself, you can go to our Facebook page at mention at facebook.com mention English. But if you have an organized course, then you can take your questions to your teacher. And I always give my students my email address so that they can send me a private email if they're doing their homework and they're having problems during the week. So this motivation and support is very important in a group class at an academy. Number three, teacher and peer support. Well, I spoke about this in number two. You get help from the teacher to answer your questions inside the class and hopefully outside the class via email or some class wiki, however the teacher is doing it. You learn from your classmates and your classmates learn from you. There's human interaction and this group interaction is more powerful than interacting with a computer or doing exercises in a book by yourself at home. Number four, speaking. You can prepare the grammar and the reading and the listening at home. But what about the speaking? You have to speak with someone. You can see examples of the speaking test on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for FCE speaking. But you have to do it. You have to speak with someone. And the teacher in the class will make sure you have the practice you need before the exam, speaking with your classmates and with the teacher. Accountability is number five. You do your homework. Your teacher gives you assessments and tests. And your teacher watches you as you progress in your studies during the year. You do practice exams in the class before the exam so that your teacher can guide you and tell you what you're doing wrong and correct you and improve your exam technique in the class. Number six, consistency. Most students at our school study two hours twice a week and they do homework on other days. So that is four hours a week of classroom study. And I recommend at least two hours more studying at home every day if possible. It's better to study for half an hour a day every day than four hours at once once a week. It's not cheap to study at a good academy so when you pay for a course or when you pay for a term and you miss a lesson it really hurts because you're losing money. That goes back to motivation, the financial motivation of studying and going to class because you've paid for it. If the teacher is fun and your classmates are nice, then you look forward to studying and you'll go every lesson. It becomes also a social meeting place, that human interaction again. So that takes us to number seven. It's fun. Lessons should be fun. If you're having fun, you're probably learning. It's social. You meet people who ha perhaps have similar reasons for studying than you. So they have the same goal. They want to pass the FCE exam and you're working together to achieve the same goal. At our school, we often go out for meals together. Not every week, but around Christmas time or at the end of the school year or maybe at Easter, we'll go out and speak English and have um, a meal and, um, and see each other socially. So the lessons become more than academic. They are a social meeting place. Okay, that's all I have for you for episode three. In the next episode, organizing vocabulary. I'll be speaking about the best way to help you organize your vocabulary for the exam. So, until then, have a good week and I'll speak to you in the next episode.